Well, here we are in the middle of noir November, and one of the many things I love about most film noirs is the pacing. The plot moves along at a good clip, each scene builds upon the next, ramping up the tension and suspense. Even the dialogue is direct and fast-paced. But what happens when a noir or a neo-noir goes beyond its usual running time of 90 minutes or less? Well, that's the topic for today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, can a neo-noir with a clocking time of over two hours actually work? Let's check it out. Today's film is The Hot Spot from 1990. It's 130 minutes long. It's in color. This is about a drifter who arrives in the small Texas town and quickly becomes involved with two very different women and with a bank robbery. There are many noir elements in place here. Um, there's a, a blackmail, there's a murder, there's crime, there's uh, ulterior motives, there's uh, adultery, a uh, femme fatale, and it's even based on a pulp crime novel. So what's missing from this film? Well, the major problem is it's just much too long. In fact, the original cut was four hours, which to me is just, uh, sounds interminable. This one is a little over two hours long. Um, uh, about half the film uh, involves the main character hanging out with one of the two main female characters, and that really gets tedious after a while. It doesn't do anything to move the plot along, and it just kind of drags down the pace, and whenever another, it got to the point when whenever he would show up in another scene with one of the women, I'm thinking, oh, here we go again. Okay, let's get through this and maybe move this plot along somewhere. There's no real uh, great amount of tension or suspense until I'd say the last 30 minutes of this film. Uh, but there are some things I did like about this film. First of all, it's well directed by Dennis Hopper. Um, visually, it's very interesting, uh, even though it doesn't have much of a noir look to it. But his uh, background and skills as a photographer and a painter are very evident here in his choice of colors, his choice of camera movements. He really makes you feel the heat in this hot Texas town. And this uh, came uh, uh, along during his an upswing in Hopper's career after his stint and rehabilitation. He appeared in River's Edge and then he appeared uh, in uh, Blue Velvet, one of my favorite films. And if you want to know more about Hopper, uh, you can check out my episodes I did on Mad Dog Morgan and on his film Out of the Blue. Another strength of this film belongs to the performances. Don Johnson plays our lead character. This was his first uh, real big major film role since leaving Miami Vice, the TV series. And it's a good noir performance. He's in almost every scene here. And he, uh, he is, has very little dialogue here. So it's a good noir character. He does a good job. He's a good looking guy, comes across well on screen. And uh, one of the lead female performances is by Virginia Madsen. She plays our uh, adulterous femme fatale. The color red dominates whenever we see her, uh, her clothing, her bright red lipstick her bedroom decor, it's, it's almost to excess and almost becomes laughable to a point. It's just so overdone, but I did like it. Um, she's very sexy, she's very aggressive, very seductive in this film. Her house is filled with these uh, stuffed uh, predatory animals, or heads mounted on the wall. So it's like every room you walk into or into her house, you feel like you're getting attacked. So that's a little bit overdone too, I thought. And she's probably best known for her roles in Candyman and Sideways. The other female lead is played by Jennifer Connelly. She's like the virgin to Madsen's horror in this film. She's uh, bathed in natural light all the time. She wears sundresses. She is very young and innocent. She's supposed to be 19 in this film. Uh, she's a brunette, whereas Madsen is like a platinum blonde. And uh, she's just, I think Jennifer Connelly is just gorgeous. She's maybe a little too coquettish and flirtatious in this film, even though she's also quite virginous. So Don Johnson, is, is, uh, his character is attracted to both of these opposite women. 
and uh, both actresses do appear naked in here. There's a good deal of sexuality in this film. I think that's probably one reason why the tagline for the film was film noir like you've never seen. And I think also maybe the hot spot is another sort of double entendre going on there. Um, another thing I liked about the film was the music. John Lee Hooker and the great Miles Davis uh, appear on the soundtrack. Now I've been putting this off for a while, but one of my pet peeves in films occurs twice in this film. It occurred twice in The Driver, which I recently did an episode on. It occurred in at least one of those Dark Knight films. And that's when we have a main character who's very smart and very savvy, uh, suddenly turns around and his adversary is standing right there. Or his adversary suddenly appears behind him. This main character doesn't hear the guy walking up. He doesn't see him walking up. Suddenly, this adversary just appears out of nowhere. I mean, those Dark Knight films, Batman makes a big entrance. So how could he just suddenly be standing there? Anyways, uh, have you seen that before in some of these films? It really kind of bugs me. Uh, my rating for The Hot Spot, I'm going to give this one three flames out of five. Why flames? There's a fire that is an important element in this film. Um, I've seen much better neo-noirs, uh, both these After Dark uh, collections behind me here um, have much better neo-noirs in there. I've done episodes on all those films. Um, this one has good style, good performances, but it just drags and just can really test your patience after a while. Um, so what's on this disc? This is a Radiance disc. It's a Region B. It comes with a, a very good 30-page booklet. Um, there is reversible artwork which looks like that. And this is part of the booklet, so the artwork is the same as this booklet here. And uh, there are a few extras. There are some archival interviews with Virginia Madsen, with Dennis Hopper, with William Sadler, a character actor who's also in here. Those are about five minutes each. And there are some new interviews, ones with uh, a guy who was the editor of a Dennis Hopper interview book, and another one is with a writer, crime writer, crime uh, a fiction expert and he both of those interviews are about 20 minutes long so where can you see the hot spot well i don't see it streaming anywhere right now you can rent it you can buy it this one might be hard to find especially at a decent price it's i think it's uh it's limited to 3,000 copies so it might be gone already kino does put out its own edition of it with the same archival interviews on it so you can get that for under 20 bucks or on sale. The last Kino sale was 10 bucks. So there's another way to go if you want to see this one. Um, so uh, feel free to leave a comment or suggestion down below. I would like to thank the following people who've left comments since our last episode. They include Neil's Movie Channel, Michael, Tina, Martin, Robbie, Sid, Mike's DVD and Blu-ray collection, and Man Call. Thank you so much for taking the time to comment on various episodes that I posted. Uh, leave a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Welcome to our newest subscribers, Barbara, Gustavo, Robbie, Mike's DVD and Blu-ray collection, and Vermin. Thank you so much for subscribing. Subscribing is free. Also free is we're on Letterboxd under the Casdoy Closet. There's a link down below in the story notes. That's where we leave brief written reviews of other things we're watching. Most recently, Quiz Lady, which is currently streaming on Hulu. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, maybe some more uh, noir episodes while we're still in November. Otherwise, see you next time.